Hey guys, Clovix here. Welcome to another episode of What Remains of Edith Finch. Last time went off, um, we were exploring the house, and now I'm on to the third uh, character, Sam, of the Finch family. He said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore we'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Sam! Calvin! Dinner's ready! Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that, Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. And maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. Yeah. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. The day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Oh my god. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When oh. I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. Huh. Okay, so sorry, that was Calvin, not Sam. Sam was telling his brother's story. I mean, he was 11 years old, man. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. Yeah, it's like, again, you... You basically explore... Uh, everywhere to like. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Yeah, Barbara. A uh, sixteen. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. Oh, that's what I'm up. calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> mm, getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. 
her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles in secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick. But the house was silent. Wow, they get, they actually got the music for Halloween. She found Rick's clutch and imagine the worst. is the infamous Hookman Killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. The old fridge rattled and grew still. Oh, dear! Oh! Rick? Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you- She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late Picture show. Hours later. Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Police described the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> Another way out of here. Night, night. She played her part beautifully. Molly's door hadn't been opened in years. The hinges grow.
I wonder how they were able to get the music. You got man had vanished. She listened for his breathing, but all she heard was. monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why Mom didn't like me playing with the music box. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. It's funny, all those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. I wonder if that comic was right about there being a key inside the music box near the basement.
Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. I'm oh, 54 a year. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while I still can. Man, they had a bomb shelter. I know it's out there somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara and Molly and Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Walter died when I was six. 
I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. Yeah, so he's one of the... I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. <sighs> but if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Though, to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. history of imagination and stubbornness and madness any of it seems possible been surrounded by death for so long we've just gotten used to it what kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house it's embarrassing for me to admit this but the pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one Three of the gerbils were mine, and two had been my fault. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. 
my mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. See, I can either go. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. We never found Milton's body. So my mom insisted we were putting up a monument, not a tombstone. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. It's like, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're like, uh, She's 17. She's 17, married and two weeks pregnant. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. Wait, this guy's 33, yet he looks like he's... Dawn, I promise, you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are gonna last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. What? Am I gonna have to shoot anything? It's perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. Did you want to get a picture of me, or what? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. That camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hey! 
<laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Give me a minute to check the map. Don? Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don. If you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Great shot, Don! Whoa. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Sorry, Don, just gotta reset the timer. <laughs> Dad, it, it's twitching. I think That's it's. That's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! <laughs> Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Um, alright, that's gonna be the episode for this one. Thank you guys for watching, as always. I'll see you guys later.